I don't understand the concept of submission. The idea of a woman submitting to a man simply because of their gender differences does not make any sense to me. My brain has refused to comprehend it. Like it just it's like a puzzle that has refused to fit together in my brain. And I get this comment a lot on my post, people telling me that people like me cannot settle down because we are not submissive. And I have a hard time understanding what it means for a woman to submit to a man. I don't understand it. So let me let me use an example. Let's say, for instance, I want to go somewhere, somewhere. And my supposed husband tells me that I cannot go. Are you saying that as a woman and as a wife, I'm supposed to stay put? Not because he gave me any reason, no. not because my mental health is at risk, not because I'm physically in danger, not because of anything that is detrimental to me. It is just because he said so. How? How? As in, I've been taking decisions since I've been able to think. Even as a child, I've been making decisions. And my parents were molding me, preparing me to be an adult, to be independent thinking, to be able to do things on my own, to survive in this world. They successfully did that. I became an adult and I started making decisions. And then I get married. I'm supposed to carry my sense of reasoning, wusa and akoko, and do things simply because a man tells me so. Make it make sense to me. Because I don't get it. If me and a man are trying to make a decision, me and my husband are trying to make a decision, he better be coming with superior argument. If it is not, we'll go do what I say. Even you as a man that is here preaching, submit, 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 there are certain things you are not willing to do because of your pride, because of your ego. Forget this thing where we say men ego. Everyone have ego. Women, men, children, we all have ego. We all have pride. Hmm? You cannot tell me as a reasonable adult, as an intelligent woman, as someone who can decide what is good and what is bad. You cannot tell me that I should obey a man. It's not possible now. It's not possible. Let's not deceive ourselves. I know that women are taught to obey for peace to reign. For whose peace? The man's peace, my peace, or our peace. There is no research out there that says men are more intelligent than women. None. Men might be more abstract in thinking, but that does not... So, um, the husband on top, I, I, I think, um, I understand your concern. I, I, I basically understand the difficulty you have relating with the concept of submission. But I would not really want to go into the biblical point of view about it because i mean you already know i mean the bible expects men to love their women and women to submit to their husband in other words bible expects love from the angle of the man and then expects respect from the angle of a woman um i mean before i progress you should ask yourself this question so why is it is it that the bible expects um a man to love and the woman to respect. I mean, that, that should be your first interrogation. I do this internally. Why do you expect that a, that a man pays the bride price before marrying a woman? So you, you also need to think about that. So what, what led Adam into, I mean, failing in the Garden of Eden? I mean, who has the instruction of not eating of a fruit? And who was um, a kind of mandated to see to the fact that that instruction is kept? And then why did Adam feel? Um, another question you might likely want to um, ask yourself would be, uh, why is it that the love of a man towards his wife should be premised on the love of Christ to the church? Because, I mean, the Christ loved the church even when the church is messing up. Christ still loves the church. So it means that the love of a man towards the woman should not be subjected or should not be subjective, rather. Uh, um, it should not be based on the fact that the woman is behaving right or behaving wrong. The man should love the woman no matter what goes down. On the other hand, the Bible says women should submit to the authority of the man. I mean, why is this necessary? 
So why is it that the, the right of accepting a man is also given to the woman? So a man needs to ask for a woman to be in a relationship with her and the woman has to agree or disagree. Why are they given the right of first response? You see, things don't just work because um, nature wants them to work. There are practical reasons why things work because nature wants them to work. The right of acceptance is given to the woman so that the woman has the right to choose a man that she can be submitted to. You see, the, the problem is that, you see, we are in a generation where we come up with a lot of things and we think we know more than people that have lived for so long a time. I mean, the Bible has said women should submit and men should love. Traditionally and otherwise, this is expected from a woman and this is expected from a man. See, a doctrine that has stood the test of time and has been respected, a test of time for billions of years, and has been respected by highly intelligent people over the years, and you suddenly found it faulty. Only you found it faulty, just like some of us in this generation begin to find some of this doctrine faulty. You're deceiving yourself, you're delusional. I don't think you're right. And that's the basic truth. But let me begin to provide some answers to the question I have asked in the first place. So a man needs to go and pay bride price to the father of the woman or to the family of the bride to let the family know that, well, I am serious. I'm committed to being with this, your daughter. I'll take care of her, I'll provide for her, I'll do everything reasonable that will make her feel comfortable with me. And then you have accepted that the bride price be collected when you are not reason, when you are not ready to understand that you need to be subjective to the mind of the man. Because if you marry a man, you marry his intelligence, you marry the way he thinks, you marry the way he considers things. Certainly, it's not every time a man will give you reason why you should do what you should not do, or why you should do a certain thing, or why you should not do a certain thing. Other times, he will just keep it to himself. And because, I mean, he has a right to keep to himself and he has a right to speak to you. But you see, as a submissive woman, you would be able to make that man say the things he's not, be, he's not, um, he cannot say. I mean, let me really tell you the meaning of submitting. So submitting to a man in my own template would mean, uh, I mean, uh, voluntarily lower, lowering yourself in a position that will enable you to communicate with that man, even when you know more than him, in a way, it can reason with you and accept your point of view. You see, you said something on your video and you said that, well, if that man um, does not bring a superior reason, then we do what you want. No man is going to accept that. And that's the truth. Now, you could come up with a superior reason, but the presentation matters. I mean, if you don't present your superior reason in the way that shows the respect the Bible command or the society expects or the tradition expects, that man will not listen to you and there is nothing you can do about it. So the commandment submit simply means voluntarily. You may be more than that man. Nobody disputes that. But you voluntarily lower yourself to the point, the position that you can help him see things clearly that he cannot see. That is why you are her helpmate. So, I mean, you, you should begin to understand because evaluating the fact that you would submit to a man based on your mental capacity or intelligent quotient or because he's a man is even more faulty because, I mean... When the Bible gives instruction, when Christ gives instruction to the church, it's not subjected to whether the church understands the essence of the instruction. Otherwise, why would God ask Naaman to go and bathe in the river for seven times? Why would the prophet say that to Naaman? It doesn't make any logical sense. But he's got to obey. He said, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Men should love unconditionally. Women should also respect and submit unconditionally. But before you do that, be sure that the mind you're going to submit to is good enough to value your submission. Because it's even a wrong perception to think that this concept of submit is like the concept of, okay, the, my husband is my president or my governor and I am the subject. No, it's not a slave master kind of relationship. It's a kind of relationship where both parties are actively playing their individual roles, but both parties understand that, well, this is my head and this head, I have to convince him to listen to me or to do things 
he doesn't necessarily want to do. And that is how you submit. Otherwise, I mean, you're, you're a husband hunter, so I don't know how you hunt this husband if you don't have the basic tenets to unravel the secret behind some of this concept. Because if, 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 you, if you base your submitting on the IQ of the man, I mean, that's myopic enough and that's quite narrow thinking. In order for you not to put the bag before the cat, first and foremost, at the point of blessing the hunter or hunter, um, is he husband hunter? Do you accept to be my woman? Do you accept to marry me? And you look at the man, you look at his IQ, you look at his mentality, you look at his intelligence, and you tell yourself, I cannot respect this man based on how he thinks. At that time, you should reject that submission. You should reject that proposal so that you will be able to submit to the mind of the man. That way, you have protected yourself. I mean, sometimes why I made this video is to prevent... Um, our naive youths who don't have a broader perspective to some of these things, not to pick a narrow perspective and a personal bias perspective like this one. Submitting to a man means you know your worth, you know what you're capable of doing, but you voluntarily lower yourself to the point you can make him see clearly things he cannot see. Men cannot see certain things clearly than women, but also they are better abstract thinkers. They think they're more futuristic in their thinking than women. Women are emotional thinkers. And this does not mean that in living well or seeing things clearly, you need the emotional part and you also need the abstract part, you need the futuristic part. And men are gifted to think futuristically and abstractly more than the women who think emotionally. So you need a combination of the two. And the woman must know how to present this stuff to her husband in a way the man can see through her thoughts. But if you go around nagging, fighting, pushing your opinion into him, you will fail. And this is the simplest truth.